Yeah guys, today I want to make a video about who is going to pay for the increased gas prices and the answer is me amongst many other people. So here you can see a gas pipe which is leading into my house. Unfortunately my house is heated with natural gas and yeah this is where it comes into my house and then it leads to the other room where the gas burning device stands. So it really sucks that my house is heated with gas because now the gas price has exploded. Um, it already has exploded in fall last year so that was when it started to inflate but now it really has gone through the roof. So the price of natural gas has become insane. Now here you can see an article of an Austrian newspaper which shows the invoice of a family. They have a house, they have a gas uh, heating system like me and then here you can see the invoices that they have shown to the newspaper. So in the last year they had um, gas, natural gas, which cost them 872 euros but this year they paid 2589 euros for almost the same amount of gas. So imagine that, that's crazy. So now they were paying for electricity and gas all together 3811 euros and that's a lot of money. So this is how the prices of um, gas and electricity have risen in Austria. Also I have a better graph where you can see um, which of the energy prices have increased the most. So the most um, increase was in oil. Uh, the price increase was 118% in only one year. Natural gas has gone up 73%. So that's pretty crazy. Electricity right now is only a plus of 16.6% so that's not too bad actually, it could be worse. So actually I'm really concerned about the gas prices that are exploding so much and here in Europe it's really insane. Now the problem is that we Austrians we get 80% of our natural gas from Russia. So unfortunately we have made ourselves dependent on Russian gas and now unfortunately we are paying the price for it. Now the thing is, even if you don't have a natural gas heating device in your home, you will also pay for this because a lot of gas plants are using natural gas to produce electricity. So the electricity will become more expensive than it was in the previous years. Okay, the next on, I found a very interesting article today in the uh, Österreichische Kronenzeitung. It states that half of the Austrians are ready for a blackout and the other half is not. Now this is actually pretty good. A couple of years ago most of the Austrians probably were not ready but now they are more um, aware of this problem and many people, many experts say that a blackout has become more likely than in previous years. So what I personally did in the last months was I was preparing myself for a blackout and I really believed that the chances are really high that a blackout might be happening this winter or maybe the next winter. So what I've done is first of all I have installed a wood stove in my living room upstairs. So if there's no gas coming from this pipe anymore then I will still at least have a wood stove so that I can keep my house from freezing. Now the second thing that I'm doing right now is preparing my household against a blackout and if you think about what is the most important electric device that you have in your household then I think it's the freezer because I have a lot of meat in my freezer here and I want to have meat. This is for me the most important thing in a crisis. I want to be able to um, store my meat in a freezer to keep it cool and to prevent it from going off. Now the thing is in a blackout situation uh, if you don't have electricity the meat inside of your freezer will go off in maybe 12 hours and that's if you're lucky. So if you are living in a warmer area then it can go off much quicker. So I think that the most important prep is to get a power station so that you can keep your freezer running. That's the most important thing. Um, it's also great to get a power station for lights and other devices like walkie talkies and emergency radios but I believe that um, having a freezer which is working during a blackout is worth gold. So now let's take a look at my freezer and which power station is running my freezer because not all of them do. Okay, 
this here is my freezer and it draws 133 kilowatt hours per year. All right, so if you're wondering what's inside of my freezer, um, mostly I buy organic meat. Uh, so here we have organic meatballs. This is some organic beef, which I got with a discount. Some organic sausages. And this is some pork for barbecuing. So yeah, this is a lot of meat inside of here. So I don't want to miss it in a um, emergency situation and this is going to feed us and keep us healthy. Now last time I tried to run this freezer with the small power station but it did not work because this power station is not strong enough. So this is a power station by the company Power Oak. It's not bad at all but it's just not, it doesn't have enough of water hours to run this freezer here. It does actually nothing. See, it doesn't draw any wattage whatsoever, so it's not um, charging my freezer. So this unit is great, but it's not good for freezers and fridges because it doesn't deliver enough of watt hours. Okay, now I want to show you my new power station. Oh. So this is a power station by the company Ecoflow and they were nice to sponsor this video. So first of all, this power station is much stronger than the other one. It has about 1200 watt hours to spend and therefore it's also much heavier because the battery inside is really so much heavier. But at least I have to say that they have installed two really nice handles so that you can carry this power station very easily. Okay, so now let's uh, switch on the power station here. You get this really nice display. Right now it is charged at 99%. Then here in the front you have different kinds of USB ports. Here at the side you can charge the power station. You can either charge it by plugging it into the grid or with a solar panel. This here is a reset button. And then here at the other side you have some European sockets. Of course you can also get the American version where you have American sockets. And here you got a 12 volt socket. And now it's time to plug in the freezer. Let's see if it's working. Right now the light is off. Yeah, it's working. Oh my god, I'm so happy that this is working. Look at that. Okay, so now the freezer is running. We can see the slide here. And if we take a look at the display, it says that we have a output of 42 to 43 watts. And um, if it stays like this, the power station will power my freezer for the next 30 hours. Now, my first impression of the EcoFlow is that it's really well made. Um, at least the outside looks very high quality. It comes with very thick handles here. You're not going to break them off. And it has this nice display and many options on how you can use and also recharge this power station. Okay, next I want to test this power station by hooking up a solar panel to it. I have a 100 watt solar panel outside and I want to see how much energy I can get from the solar panel into the power station and if the wattage of the solar panel is more than the freezer is drawing. All right folks, so I have just set up my solar panel and this is a 100 watt solar panel. It was a really cheap one I have to say. So it probably does not put out 100 watts. It's more like 65 watts or so, maybe 70 watts. It really depends on how much um, the sun is shining and if it's tilted the right way. Now, unfortunately today we do not have um, clear sunshine. So we have some clouds going on here and this is why the output of the solar panel will be even less. Good girl, good girl. Okay, um, so here I have my solar panel and these are the solar cables that are leading inside of my basement. Okay, this is where the freezer stands. And if we turn around and go up the stairs, we can see Amy. <laughs> Hello, Amy. <laughs> and this is where the solar panel is set up. 
Now, unfortunately, I'm still missing some MC4 connectors on the cables here. So I quickly want to install them and then we finally can hook up our solar power station. Okay, so I've changed the location of the power station and I've plugged in a extension cord so that the freezer is running. Okay, so now we have connected the solar cables to the adapter cable that came with the Acreflow power station. So you will get this uh, conversion cable which converts the MC4 connectors to an XT60 connector, which is this one here. And this plugs right into the side here at the yellow socket okay so woo, something has changed okay so the solar panel right now only puts out 57 watts that's not too much and i think it has gotten cloudy again okay we have a partial shade on my solar panel so i have to rearrange the solar panel. Okay, I have rearranged the solar panel. Now it has a little bit more of a better angle and no shade on it. 64 watts right now from the solar panel. So the first figure that you can see is the solar panel, the input, the output is the freezer. All right guys, so I'm really happy that my system is working. This one solar panel is producing me about 65 watts when the sun is shining. Right now it's a little bit cloudy, so uh, two minutes ago I saw that there were only 25 watts coming in because there was a cloud hanging over my solar panel. And yeah, this way you can definitely extend the lifetime of the battery. You maybe will push the 30 hours of capacity to 60 hours, but it really depends on the weather. So now what is my plan for a blackout situation? So my plan is that um, I actually have a second solar panel, the same one which you saw outside and in a blackout situation I would connect both of those um, panels in series and this would give me about 120 to 130 watts. So this would be my emergency plan if there's really a power outage or a blackout which is taking longer than 30 hours. Also you really have to make sure that you do not come over 10 amperes of input and over 65 volts of input because this would damage uh, the power station. So you really have to figure out how you want to wire your solar panels. So if you have two solar panels but you wire them in parallel, it will probably um, be over 10 amperes. So it's better to wire them in a series and then you should stay below 10 amperes and also below 65 volts. All right guys, so this is the EcoFlow power station. I love it. Uh, finally, I found one which is strong enough to power my freezer. So if you want to freeze your meat during a blackout situation, then make sure that you check out this power station. You will find all of the links in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned till next time.